What is the difference between Mandwa and Manga? Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Recently, I've been making a lot of content related to Mandwas. And while it's a fairly known medium currently, it still doesn't stand close to Mangas. So I thought I'd make a video for you guys to make it easier for those of you who don't have a clue about the difference between the two mediums. Manwa's rise to fame. If you were to look in terms of simply the bestseller for graphic novels, what would come to your mind? Probably mangas like Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, and many more. However, you'd be amazed to find out that the biggest release for a graphic novel has been a manwa. It is none other than solo leveling. A manwa that I've consistently heaped praises for on this channel. If you were only looking at Japan then, yes, solo leveling is probably something unheard of. However, the North American market and many other countries apart from Japan have been seeing rapid growth in the demand for manwas. While this is great, it also confuses the average anime viewer simply because the two terms are used synonymously. Manwa versus manga. So for starters, the most obvious distinction between the two types of medium is the country they come from. Manga are comics, please don't cancel me anim fans, but essentially they are comics from Japan. While manwas are also comics that are made in South Korea. Fun fact, they are also created in North Korea. However, those are inaccessible in any other language. While it may seem that manwa and manga may not have that much of a difference in genres because of simply being comics. The country of origin, cultural influence and popular topics in each country play a major role in shaping the story for us. That's why we're to take an example of Marvel or DC back when they were only comics. You'd mostly find superhero stuff because that's what the majority of their people consumed but in Japan, the only superhero manga that amassed popularity was My Hero Academia, and if you've watched the anime or read the manga, then you'll agree that how much difference there is in the way the heroes and the antagonists of the series are built. So in the end, culture does have a great influence, and if it's something unique and rare, it can do something for you. Histories of Mandwa and Manga According to most historians, the first manga dates all the way back to the 12th century. However, the modern format that we know today began after Japan had just come from an extremely tragic event. After World War II, Japan went through many changes and the manga industry was also something that came to be in that post-war world. Osamu Tezuka, the godfather of manga, was the first person to create it and set the standards and dynamics for the aesthetic and dynamic art sequences that we see in modern mangas. However, Tezuka's skills didn't stop there, as many mangakas came soon after. One of them was Machiko Hasegawa, who created a manga based on the daily life of a housewife after World War II. Thus, the slice-of-life genre was created. Whereas, if you look at Manwa, then you'll find its history in political and social commentary. If we were to go back to the time when Korea was still under Japanese rule, the government would disallow Manwas to talk about any topic that even hinted at resistance. As time passed on while the Japanese went away, Manwas were still something that was very intertwined with the government, and I think we can all agree when the government is involved things can go seriously wrong. And things did go wrong as the government once shut down the creation of Manwas, to now generating thousands of copies of it. Probably, after realizing the revenue it brings in. The visual difference between the two mediums. Another observable difference between mangas and manwas is how they're read. Mangas are read right to left, top to bottom, while manwas are read left to right, top to bottom. Another visual difference that comes alongside reading mangas and manwas is that mangas are usually drawn in black and white. Now, don't get me wrong, fully colored mangas do exist. However, 
they're just extremely rare. This is mostly because mangas are serialized in installments in weekly or monthly magazines. Those chapters are then compiled into volumes known as Tankubon, the format most recognizable to global audiences. So as you can see, changing to fully colored mangas would change their business models. While Japan has been shy about digitalizing its mangas, in recent times they've opened up to it too as it generates higher revenue and helps the creator's story to reach a high audience, since copies aren't sold in every country. Whereas Mandwas, on the other hand, have always been colored and never been shy of being spread digitally. In modern times, most Mandwas exist as webtoons, but not to get confused. While most Mandwas are webtoons, not all webtoons are Mandwas. This transition to webtoon for Mandwas changed its landscape. If you were to notice, you'd find Mandwa panels to be long and optimized for scrolling, while manga panels are arranged more like a book. This consumption of Mandwas through digital appliances has led to a totally different art style with stunning visuals. This is a rare thing, but some webtoons also embed music tracks to make the reader feel closer to the story. While the colored man was definitely bring a new flavor and produce some really good panels, the art back when it was produced in copies still stands out compared to the digital version. Current trends in mangas and manhwas. Both of the mediums tell many different stories with a variety of artwork. However, if we're to observe from a neutral position, one key and subtle difference that we'll find is the focus on teamwork and individuals. When it comes to Japanese mangas, and you notice that some of the bigger manga titles such as Naruto, One Piece, and some others all revolve around the theme of teamwork, or as we know in the manga world, the power of friendship. Even in manga such as Tokyo Go, where the main character is seemingly lonely, the plot is pushed forward by Kaneki joining different corporations. Now let's do a genre shift. Even there, you'll notice that in many non-action animes, the plot is pushed forward by the relations between the protagonists and the side characters. When you put it in retrospect, even an anime like Attack on Titan is pushed forward by the relations that Eren has. In Manwa, however, the plot is always pushed forward by the protagonist's individual goals. Sure, there may be many allies that they find in their journey, but it's their own selfish desire to achieve something that pushes them forward. Even if we take the example of solo leveling the most popular Manwa, You'll find it literally in the name that Sung Jin Wu finds his power to lie in fighting alone. Another manhwa that I recently read was Reaper of the Drifting Moon. Even in that story, you'll find the protagonist to be pushed forward by revenge. Another interesting take that I read somewhere was that while manga tries to address real-life issues in Japan, manhwa is based more on individuals that take on entire corporations. Again, if I were to mention the Reaper of the Drifting Moon, we'll see that Pew Wall is single-handedly trying to destroy the M.A. and Kingqing sects. Even if you take the subgenre that is similar to manga and manhwa, the two mediums approach them differently. Let's address the popular genre Isekai, in which the protagonist is reincarnated into a different world and becomes the most powerful person. If we were to take the example of Mushoku Tensei, the show tackles Rudas' problems in their past life, and he slowly progresses into a powerful mage. Whereas, if we're to take a similar example such as solo leveling, then we'll see that the transformation for both the characters is absolutely different. In a couple of chapters, Sun Jin Wu becomes an S-ranked hunter, and ever so slightly does he face any other negative thoughts except for his realization that he's still weak. Both mediums approach characters differently, making them great in their way. Conclusion So in the end, regardless of what story is portrayed in these mediums, they both are great in their way and perhaps with time, the two will become complementary to each other. 
For now, in my personal opinion, I still do believe that mangas are the better medium for storytelling. However, when it comes to pure action and badassery, the protagonists and manwas take the W. That's all for today, my friends. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until then, stay tuned for more and see you later.